Hey everyone, it's Balzine. This is going to be something new today. So we've got two professional players from VM. We've got Tank, we've got uh, Crabbling, some amazing players. This is four noobs in my community as part of my charity stream tournament that I hosted on the 22nd. Uh, we've raised over about £300 of charity and it was also some really good fun. Uh, but we've got uh, large funds for the professional players. So they have uh, 12400 each and the new players uh, have 7000 each. So let's see how this battle goes and let's jump into live commentary. Uh, but yeah, we've got, like I said, we've got an insane uh, roster coming up here. We've got four players going into two pros. I'm really looking forward to see what happens. Um, it is going to be an absolute banger. What I'm going to do is take that off so we can make this into a tuba. How much has done it to be so far? Um, I don't think we're close to... Um, look. Because with the gifted subs and all that kind of stuff, we've got... Uh, like about a hundred-ish pounds. So if you donate through Til Tiltify, um, Xmas Mark Charity, um, I will probably have to try uh, another hot sauce soon enough. Pro pros will wipe the floor, I bet. You think? What do you guys think? And uh, Agent, thank you. Um, what do you I guys think? think? Gonna, I mean, I, I I imagine the pros are gonna bring a lot of units just to make up for the numbers difference. Oh, so if anyone on the noob side really doubled down and just brought some really, really tanky, good characters, high level, high rank, tier five infantry, I think they'd be able to hold through and push it. But definitely, I think we're going to see just like a big number swarm versus a big number swarm here. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. Funny enough, um, the noobs are outnumbered by three to one. Uh, so you're completely right. The allied force of the professionals have gone very 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 wide to try and take advantage of the fact that they um they have a little bit more cash per player so i'm thinking to myself that if i was in this scenario and i'm the pro player here you know what can i do personally to take advantage of how much more you know experience i have coming into battles like this you know i've got the the macro to boot um you know it's slightly disjointed you know one thing i will say is the the the, the noob side they're slightly disjointed and like sangu rightfully mentioned we need these guys as, you know, conformed and ready to go. Fighting is a fighting force here. But we'll see. We'll definitely see. And Jim, you are correct. You know, they definitely have the advantage because they've got separate you know, magic pool differences. Um, they've got a lot more resources they can kind of um, use. We can see the balance of power is definitely in the, uh, the noob side. It's just going to be interesting to see how they play it out. Uh, what we will do is um, uh, start when ready. With the pros, it is Crabbling and Tank, I believe. These guys are uh, some in insane players from uh, Moose, thanks, dude, from the VM clan. Uh, if you do SMS Smart Pro, I believe Crabbling has a YouTube channel right there. These guys, I think Crabbling is the current Russian champion uh, of all, pretty much of all Russia. He's the, he's the best of the best. And then Tank is a, a long standing veteran. So these guys are exceptionally good players. Like they are, you know, some premium players to come in against and if anyone else wants to play against them by all means we can we can arrange that one but i, I will have to just you know speak with them and see how many they can do because i know they're in russian time so uh i think it's, it's getting a little bit later on just won all russian invitational championship and there you go this guy's you know, this guy knows what he's doing this guy certainly knows what he's doing uh so i think once one of them is ready uh they'll start up but we can see a bit of a disjointed but you, the thing is we have the hindsight of seeing what's actually happening you know you can't tell if this is going to go anywhere near or uh or what's happening over here because we can see that the, the the units are separating up slightly yeah so what what um what what character jewels might we what might we see in this fight i think we've got sulfurial over there with the pros i think they've also brought an exalted hero uh i can't see who the Petonian general is there who is that is uh, that the Oh, hold on, sorry, mate. Uh, let me share my screen. Bring in, a pallet, bring in the two paladins as well. Yeah, that's a very common choice because obviously they bring the, um, yeah, the kind of protection, the guardian uh, aura. Oh, that so, yeah, no, I'm, have I'm it, really though. excited to see what's going on. Paladin doesn't have it. What is this one? This paladin has it. Smart. So these guys know how to squeeze out as much advantages as they can uh, coming in from their, um, you know, their, their specific pools. You know, they want to make sure to, to every little penny that they get needs to be used to the utmost and they need to make sure to to squeeze out as much advantage as they can possibly get here and we're in a situation that the heroes coming in from the you know the Bretonian side the paladins are going to be a bit of a problem um you know for the uh for the noob side but we're just gonna have to wait and see i think once these guys are ready they'll let they'll start up because it looks like the pros are um they're raring to go these guys are absolutely raring to go these they, they know exactly what they're doing 
This is like a, a walk in the, you know, another day in the office for these guys. Another day in the office for these guys. Who's the leader? Uh, I believe it's Krabbling. Uh, and the guy, Rusky Jim, is the ambassador for the clan. For uh, VM. So it's fascinating to see the just like the layout of the professionals and how they do it. This kind of like staggered <laughs> yeah. line of the dogs, you know, they've got yeah, all the great this. weapons spaced in this perfect checkerboard formation, and then you know the archers all lined up. It, it, it's 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 good to see this kind of thing, and so that even the noobs can kind of look at this afterwards and go like, oh, okay, this is the right way to lay out a line in multiplayer. Absolutely, you know, we can see in these scenarios you, if you don't know what you're against. And you kind of go with a checkbox in a situation, you know, you reduce the amount of damage that can possibly happen to your units. And, and you know, generally speaking, you're going to expect a little bit of artillery coming in. And, you know, by having these guys as wide as they are, um, it effectively reduces the impact of what that artillery is actually able to uh, to perform. And we can so see it's that overwhelming. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Like, I mean, where, how do you pick Jeez. your choices when you're just faced with this many targets? Um, yeah, it how, is how scary. How do you work out what the priority is? And we've got a flank coming in. We've got these dogs coming in for the flank. You know, we've got nobody that can really stop that. So we need to see Warlord kind of pull units back. But we do have anti-brain. But the thing is, when you've got um, multiple jobs within an army, it's very difficult to know exactly what you need to do in this situation because you've got so much to look out for. There's so many things that you need to keep your eye on. Will Anti Brian be able to react accordingly? You know, keep these guys protected. And we can see the Sisters is doing a significant amount of damage. We can see this Exalted Hero from Tank has taken a considerable uh, amount of damage here. That's quite worrying to see because uh, the leadership is, is kind of dancing around. But uh, the Exalted Hero effectively is just wanting to put pressure onto the Sisters as much as possible to stop them from kind of taking another map because the Sisters have options to do uh, anti large shots, so singular shots, or they can do kind of like an AoE shot into inventory. And due to the fact that we can see uh, a considerable amount of units from the professional side, you know, we're in a situation where do we need to actually invest further um, into getting dogs. sisters killed? Or, you know, what's going on here? And we can see, yeah, you're right. The dogs actually have been caught out slightly and they are reacting accordingly. But we can see Crabbling has run. Uh, yeah, they're working together exceptionally well. Tank and um, Crabbling are kind of interacting and ducking and weaving between where they need to kind of be. And we can see the, the Hell Cannon's already being shut down um look at this the sisters and the oh my god imagine being these people it's like help <laughs> send help please is, is an incredible choice you know instead of yeah. going for ranks on all of his units he said i'm going to spend that money on, on putting my heroes on flying <laughs> mounts so that they can really just shut down and control the map yeah absolutely absolutely and we're seeing oh wow you're right yeah that's a, that's that's a comment, the interesting to see I don't believe... Yeah, Sarathel is not the one that you need to kill. Uh, I think the three you need to kill to kill the Chaos... Uh, the, the, the second Chaos invasion. It's Sigvald, Kolek, and... Um, what's it? What's his name? Sigvald? Okay. Archeon. Those are the three you need to kill. You don't actually need to kill uh, that fella. But we can see in this situation, the balance of power is actually quite even because there's so much going on. We can see over here, BMK has been... Ooh, this is a pretty disastrous situation potentially for, for BMK with his archers here. Let's hope that he can kind of kite around with the Waywatchers and, and keep doing that pressure when he needs to. But it looks like, you know, the mobility of these units coming through. You know, the Bretonian cavalry is so difficult to keep in mind, you know, to, to remember yeah. about. But just look at the sheer amounts of things just going on on the screen. It's difficult to know where to be. You know, Crabbling is controlling these units over here. He's ensuring he's, he's attacking the right target. He made sure to send his melee, you know, the range units protect against anything kind of threatening them there. You know, BMK is actually doing okay down here. You know, there's not enough uh, threats on the Bretonian side to actually lock these guys down and do the damage that needs to happen. And there is just so much to go on. I mean, I, I can't imagine what these pros are thinking because there's just so much they actually need to take control of and then just think about. You know, we've got some units in reserve. That's one thing that's actually quite um, a common thing to happen in professional play. They do not invest all units at once. You know, they have those guys in reserve that need to be in reserve. And we can see the Chaos Warriors have gotten slaughtered. You know, the terror routes coming through. And um, we can see that there's a lot of units effectively under pressure. I mean, we're the Bretonians right now, Agent. You know, how do you keep the pressure up? And you can see a treatman is coming in thick and, and fast. Uh, this this concentrated fire is exactly what you do. He's had all of these units spaced out, so they're getting hit by heroes, but only one's ever being occupied at a time. And then all four, all five of them who aren't engaged are all dumping arrows into single units. Um, it's 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 quite good. He's and he's had a tricky time. He managed to respond to the way watchers in the back, but the knights did take a lot of damage having to to deal with that backline threat. Absolutely. The thing that scares me the most is like the the Pomen have so bad leadership and terrible AP damage. So you know, shooting something with 110 
armor. I mean, they are eventually whittling it down, but we can see even this unit with 20 leadership is routing, you know. We want to make sure that they don't actually end up losing all of their units, but we can see the, you know, the from from routes. So we will get shatter and ETS uh, We'll get shatters if they if they route three times in a row, and we can see that the, the sheer numbers of the um, the the, uh, the pro players here is is kind of getting to the point where it's overwhelming, and it's actually becoming into their favor here. You know, we're, we're getting to the point where the numbers are actually doing lots. You know, the treatment is starting to, to crumble here because the Bretonian archers are. Uh, I mean, this is just a shout out to uh, to Crabbling here because of the way he's forming his units. You can see that it's so effective, and the the adaptation of taking fire arrows as well, because I believe um, they have a fire weakness. So understanding yeah. you're going going against Treeman and potential threats like that. If you pick Writer, you're expecting kind of Dryads and Treeman coming in, and obviously the fire units will have a, an additional like ten percent damage because they have those ammunition. So it's understanding. Every element of the mechanics within this game, there are so many to take into consideration. And we can see already, you know, leveraging the fact that they've got fire arrows. You know, it's easy to forget that they actually exist, but remembering that you can bring in fire arrows for fairly cheap. We can see there's pox arrows, fire arrows. There's a significant variance here, and it's, it's good to see, but, um, you know, Sangu. We're in a situation where uh, the Sisters of Twilight is getting chased around for the entire map. I feel like BMK is having to run away consistently here. You know, what do you try and yeah, do to enable he's, Sisters here? He's, he's been able to use up a lot of that ammunition, which is great. Um, but the Sisters are getting quite low now, and I don't know if they're um, shared uh, destiny or whatever, the um, the big heal that they get. Looks like they've got um, it, yeah. Will, will, provided they, uh, they don't route off the map at any point, obviously they will get a big heal if they get taken down much lower. Um, yep. But yeah, the Life Wizard is doing the right thing. The, the Sisters are nowhere near their healing cap. Um, they're staying together. Um, yeah, it's it's just brilliant. See, I mean, yeah, those way watchers at the back, he was right to go and shut them down. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he took a bit of a beating trying to do so. Absolutely. Way watchers are a great pick because they do have, as well as being able to do the armor piercing. I mean, if you compare them to Deepwood Scouts, for example, the Deepwood Scouts, the moment they get touched by a unit of knights charging, they would just crumble. Uh, whereas the uh, you know the way watchers you do have to invest a significant effort into getting to them and remembering that they're no slouches in melee as well. Absolutely, um, very durable. What's happening in the character fight over on the left hand side near the hell cannons? Where were they? Were what's going on? Did Sarforiel end up getting beaten down by Kolek? Yeah, it looks like we've got a bit of a mob oh, going on here. Still there? Yeah, he's there by the spider. Yeah, he's still yeah. there. The spider's still going. <laughs> Honestly, like it is exceptionally impressive to see just the, the the synergy between these professional players, understanding what needs to be done at every point in the game. It seems every single unit has uh been placed into the combat where they need to it is really really awesome to see because these guys are you know they're professional players for a reason they know what they're doing they see weakness and they attack for it they go for it uh and they know exactly what needs to be done and i just I, shout out to the having the fire arrows against as against the uh the fire weakness i really like to see that and we can see you know the potency of the noobs the noobs uh, army is very dwindling it's a one basically the pros have 10 units to the one and it's it's a scary situation i don't think there's much they can do now but uh, potentially we might need to increase the the uh, the money that the uh, the new players have because we try to make it as as fair as possible but it seems the professional players are here to play they've played exceptionally fantastic and shout out again to clan vm uh, for helping here and it looks like they have indeed taken the win the professional players showing that you know, you might have more people, but we know exactly what we need to do when these guys have the synergy to uh, to execute it. But it's it's interesting to see this. You know, when when going into scenarios like this, you never know. You know, it's difficult to know exactly what needs to be done to make it fair because the expectation of you know how good these pro players are, it, it's difficult to know. It, it's it's, you know, it's really difficult to know exactly what needs to be done to uh, to make it as fair as possible. Let me know if you've enjoyed this down below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed it and drop a like as well. I'd really appreciate it. It helps the channel out uh, massively. Um, but we have, uh, I believe, three or four different games um, where we play against pros again and we rotate the players out and the pros demonstrate something exceptionally amazing, to be honest. So please do let me know if you want to see that one. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.